What's up guys, Stas here. So the stock market ended off the day today with a pretty mixed bag. S&P 500 up 7 points, 0.24% in the green. The Dow Jones actually down $9, down 0.04% today. And the NASDAQ, what do you know, coming in to save the day, up $36, up 0.38% as big tech did pretty well today despite Amazon and Netflix actually going down. And in this video, we're going to talk more about the markets, breaking down some technicals. I also want to share with you guys eight breakout stocks that I'm watching right now and looking to trade. And if you guys stick till the end of the video, we'll probably go over some bonus ones as well. And in, in general, my thoughts right now in the markets, with the markets and the current situation um, that we're in. So if you guys enjoy the content, as always, hit that like button for me. Consider subscribing to the channel. Feel free to join our Discord chat, Facebook group link down below. And also you can get two free stocks from Webull also linked down below in the description box. Those are valued up to $1,400. So let's get right into it. What happened today in the markets? Going back over here to the S&P 500, you guys can see we ended up holding a critical point in uh, the uptrend today. You guys can see that clearly on this 30-day chart as we held the overall trend that we have here, right? Notice how this red trend line is maintaining the uptrend for the S&P meaning we're touching it for a higher low every so often, right? And we're pushing off of it and making higher highs. Notice how we hit the higher high yesterday or a couple of days ago after we hit the higher low prior to that. And now we're attempting to make yet again another higher low, although we did not hit the higher high quite yet. And that is what could happen. Maybe this upcoming week we'll have to see, but a promising sign that we are going to see a higher high this upcoming week. And mind you, Monday, the market is closed, guys. For those of you that didn't know, Monday, the market is closed. So, you know, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the sign um, that I'm seeing here is we held 29.50. That's a very good sign that we're maintaining a previous resistance as a new support, and we're looking to rally up to the next gap here, which in this case could bring the S&P up to 3,000 points, right? So in the short term, um, you know, this uh, that was a nice voice crack there, by the way. The short term here, I'm seeing the bullish, uh, you know, the bullish trend intact. Now, all we need to see is a nice pop on a Tuesday to give confirmation that, hey, we're moving up towards 2980, which is where we failed yesterday, the day before. And then after we break that, if we break that, 3000 could be the next price target on the S&P. And when it comes down to the Dow Jones, we're struggling yet again under this level 26, uh, not 26, 24,600 to 700. Notice how we held that, uh, or rather we failed to break out of that back towards the end of April. A couple days ago, we struggled um, at that point actually multiple times over the past couple of days. So until we break out of here, guys, for the Dow, honestly, the bullish momentum is uh, it's kind of contained, right? I'm thinking once we do, though, if we break out, and I've said this before in the videos, and based on these technicals, you know, there's there's a good likelihood we fill up another thousand points in the Dow Jones, maybe 1,200 up to uh, 25,800 here. At least that's what the chart is telling me um, based on this four hour chart. And I'm sure many of you guys could agree with that. And when it comes to the NASDAQ, guys, we've talked about how the NASDAQ has been the most uh, uh, the most bullish out of the bunch. Big tech, you know, the FANG stocks, Microsoft, they've been holding up these markets. A lot of them are at all-time highs, right, at, at this point. Like Amazon, Facebook, Netflix is all uh, at all-time highs. The only one that's not is uh, the only two, I'm, I believe, are Apple and uh, Microsoft. Those are the only two ones that are not quite at all-time highs, but still they've had an amazing rally from the bottom here uh, back in March. March, and Apple's actually $10, about $9 actually at this point away from all-time highs, which is insane. And Microsoft, if you guys take a look, it's actually, what, $7, $8 away um, from all-time highs here. So you can see how these big tech stocks have been, uh, you know, pushing many of them at all-time highs or, you know, and, and some of them almost at all-time highs. So that's bringing the NASDAQ up. And you can see the NASDAQ's actually almost at all 
all-time highs as well um, at about $9,400 right now, all-time high being around $9,700. And based on the price action today, guys, very bullish, right? Notice how we pulled down yesterday, and today we successfully held the previous resistance from uh, May 12th here at about $9,300. 9340 as a support. And this is exactly what we covered in the market update portion of yesterday's video. We said this, right? If we said if there's uh, an opportunity here, um, or rather if there's a, a support here at 94 or 9340, there could be an opportunity in TQQQ, which is an ETF that goes up whenever the NASDAQ's going up at a 3x rate. And what do you know? This was up not an, imme an immense amount, but it's still up about 0.9% today. So this is something that I am watching um, heading into next week as the NASDAQ could continue being bullish based on the trend that I'm seeing here. So overall, that's kind of the market update portion of the video guys what are your thoughts i'd love to know down below in the comments what are your thoughts right now on the markets in general now what i personally did today um i actually bought into ea electronic arts and if you guys were in the 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 discord chat earlier and again that's linked down below in the description and the facebook group those are free of charge to join you saw that i had a limit order at 118 dollars and uh 25 cents this was earlier in the day actually Actually, if you see the stock here, it actually peaked down to about $116.82 or 62 cents. It rallied up from there. And as we were rallying up, I told myself, okay, you know, this thing has, has good opportunity. We've covered it on the channel before. I'm liking the overall uptrend here. We're in the wedge. You know, we held the uptrend um, this morning. So on the run back up, I was saying, okay, let me just put a little limit order here, 118.25. If I get filled, I get filled. If I don't, I don't. And I actually went away from my computer a little bit. And, and, and it's funny how things work. And I got filled and I came, and I came back and I was up like, uh, what, like a, not even a percent. I wasn't up a lot. Uh, yeah, maybe like 1%. And ultimately, guys, these are shares that I'm looking to actually swing trade. And I'm very picky right now when it comes to holding stocks over the weekend, especially a long weekend. Uh, but this one in particular, um, I, I feel comfortable holding with about a 10-15% initial position here. Um, and that's just me being honest, right? If, if it was something like uh, more risky, like a penny stock, for example, um, there's no way I'm holding it over the weekend. Or a leveraged ETF, for example, there's no way I'm holding it over the weekend. But if it's a stock like EA, technicals are solid. Um, you know, there's a lot of upside potential, at least in my opinion. I feel uh, I feel comfortable holding it. And that's what I'm doing here. Um, and when it comes to GDX, you guys know I actually bought in GDX yesterday in two different uh, positions. I bought, I believe, 3585, 3505. My average cost was around 34 or 3540 rather, right around there, 3530. Um, so I actually locked in a little profits today on GDX before the long Long weekend. Not going bearish on GDX, guys. I'm not bearish, but I'm just simply locking in a little bit just to play it safe a bit, right? And uh, that's another thing I do on Fridays. I like locking in some profits. I like being a bit more conservative, especially if, I, if I've had a good week in the markets, which in this week, it, it was a pretty solid week for me. Um, so I sold a little bit of GDX, um, but I'm still actually swing trading um, the other half of the shares um, over the weekend, right? So I locked in a little bit at about uh, 36.20, I believe. Once we broke that pre-market high, locked in a little bit of profits there. The percentage on the profits, um, they were close to about 1%, maybe actually more like 2% um, in that particular trade, a little bit above 2%. So that's what I ended up doing today, guys. I'm still holding Virgin Galactic as well. That's more of a longer-term swing trade. Um, that's SPCE. They also had a pretty good day today, up 7%, up $1.03. And I actually have call options on them too. Um, those are actually down a bit here. I'm, I'm looking to see what I'm going to do. Um, I might end up cutting losses. We'll see because time decay is real guys, especially when it comes to options. I believe my, my contracts still have some time. Um, they, they have a couple more months. I believe they do uh, expire in September. Um, $35 calls, but we'll see. 
We'll see how it ends up going. Um, I might have to cut uh, losses on those, and, I'll, and of course, I'll let you guys know. So let's get into these eight stocks very quickly, guys. Rapid fire. Let's get into these eight stocks that are breakout stocks at this point. First one being NVIDIA. And these first couple ones, uh, especially these first two, they're most uh, arguably the, the most uh, hot stocks. Let's put it that way. Right now in the stock market, they've gone just ballistic, right? A NVIDIA today up another 3% up $10 despite the markets being flat overall, right? And we hit an all-time high, $363.72. And at this point, it does not seem like NVIDIA wants to cool off, right? It does not. And as a matter of fact, it seems like it wants to break out of 363. And quite frankly, that's exactly what I'm waiting for. At this point, with how hot the stock has been, it seems like we already pulled down, hit a higher low. Now we're looking to pop back up. I could easily see it rallying even more, especially if these markets continue pushing up S&P 3000, 3050, 3100 here in the short term. Um, I think NVIDIA has a lot more potential, right? So watch for the breakout above 360. Uh, 65. That's a pretty uh, a prominent uh, level here when it comes down to NVIDIA. And another one that's just insane, guys. This is utter insanity. Is Shopify. Ticker symbol SHOP. This stock today up almost 3%. Up another $23. I can't believe it, guys. When will this stock stop? It's just insane. Up to 826 bucks here. It seems like we pulled down a bit. 730 rocket from there. So at this point, am I looking to FOMO into Shopify? No. But on the first sense of a cool down, it could open up a nice scalp play, a short term in and out play, maybe for a day trade. Um, it could open up a swing trade. But the thing is, guys, and, and me, I'm more cons uh, of a conservative trader. I'm a bit scared holding this one due to it being a bit too inflated, right? But the thing is, the momentum is there, which is why, again, I said maybe a quick in and out day trade, scalp trade um, could be an option, but swing trading it, Ah, I'm a bit scared to do that, uh, but either way, I figured I'd put it in this video because there is potential. There's obviously bullish momentum, and it seems like it's going to remain that way, but I don't want to get left holding the bag, right? If I get in on a swing trade, then all of a sudden it drops 5%, 10%, even though the odds of that happening are, I guess... Not not that high, but still, I don't want to get caught holding the bag or cutting the losses on this one because it is pretty overinflated at the end of the day. And another one that I'm watching, they're reporting earnings next week, I believe. Um, wait, next week, right? Yeah, the 28th of May. That is actually next Thursday is NIO, the Chinese electric vehicle company. They actually pulled down about 2% today, down $0.06. Cents. And overall, guys, today's move brought us under the horizontal channel. So for the bulls out there, that's not too good of a sign, but a good sign is, uh, you know, for the bulls, they do have some, some, uh, uh bright, uh, uh, the bright side, right. To look at here is that we are holding the 180 SMA on the four hour chart. We ended up holding above that. And ultimately, if you draw this trend a bit more, um, slanted here, you can see the uptrend is still intact, right? Despite us seeing a triple top here, pull down the old overall trend ever since the middle of March, it seems like it's still intact. So for this, or, or next week rather, you know, I'm looking at 320, 330. If we break back into this horizontal channel, that would be very good for the bulls. We might make a move up to the, the 360s, 370s, 380s. That is what I'm looking uh, for this upcoming week. And you guys know I'm a long-term investor um, in NEO. It's a speculative position for me. I'm in, in the $2 range three dollar range i have shares all across the board here um so yeah overall i'm rooting for them ticker symbol n i o and we already went over spce 
a little bit earlier. Uh, but either way, we'll go over it again. Up a dollar one or uh, dollar three cents today, up seven percent. Take a look. The trend is slowly breaking on the five day, five minute, the downtrend that is. You know, there's been a lot of pressure on SPCE as Branson has been selling shares of the company to help his failing airline business right now. We all know there's a lot of pressure on airlines at this point in time. So that makes sense. And I and I'm in the camp that that makes sense, right? He's taking money out of a business that doesn't really need it right now as much as the airlines do. And a lot of people were freaking out about that. But the truth is, I think once the dust settles, the stock's going to go back up. And we can see some of that uh, happening right now. We see a nice bull flag here on the five-day, 15-minute uh, chart. We can see on the 20-day chart, although we are still downtrending overall, we broke the 50 SMA, so that tells me we could fill the gap up another 6%, maybe to the 180 SMA here on the hourly chart, which could put us at about $17 per share. Um, and overall, guys, this is a stock that can move like this, right? Very quick. And you can see how quick it moved earlier today. Look, it went from uh, 1478 to about 1590 in the span of an hour, right? That's a, that's a huge move of about 10%. So just keep an eye on it. There's a lot of potential here in Virgin Galactic. And another one that did well today and it broke a key resistance is CGC Canopy Growth Corporation. Take a look at where we broke, guys. It was a resistance yesterday and from a couple months ago as well. This level at 1865. Notice how we held it as a support back in October, November, right? December, heading into the new year. We held it as a support right around 1865, um, 1870, right? And once we break a support, it becomes a resistance. And now that we broke the resistance, it's again a support. So now we're trending in a channel between 1870 and about 2124 and an earnings report coming up here on uh, Canopy Growth for Canopy Growth um, this could end up being a bullish, just a recipe for an explosion, especially uh, since seeing some other MJ companies such as Aurora, seeing what they did after um, their earnings report. One could expect maybe the same for Canopy Growth. So I'm watching it, right? And if we do pop up towards the, the 20 level, this thing could explode very quickly. And uh, for that reason, you know, I'm looking at it and I'm looking to go along possibly next week, depending on um, some technicals here and some fundamentals based on their earnings report. And I know we talk about gold a lot on this channel, but we don't give silver enough love. Silver needs some love too, guys. This is arguably... It, it arguably has more potential than gold, many people say, right? And we've seen silver rally from 11 bucks all the way to 18 Now we, we saw a bit of a pull down to 17 22 Overall, the uptrend seems like it wants to continue here on the 4-hour chart as we are holding that 50 SMA. So how can we capture a move here with silver? We can maybe trade USLV. This is an inverse ETF that, to be honest, guys, I haven't traded in a long time. I, I can't even remember the last time I traded it, but it, it's it's one that goes up three times uh, whatever silver futures go up, right? And we saw silver obviously on a tear. We go back to silver again. It's gone from 11 bucks to 18 bucks, and going back to USLV, it's gone from about 21 bucks up to about 65 to 70 bucks. And disclaimer, guys, quick disclaimer: leveraged ETNs are very risky. They're only meant for day trading. They're not meant for swing trading. They're not meant for over the weekend holding. They're an instrument to get in and out of the ETN, the ETF, whatever you're trading. For that day. That's what they're meant for. Go read the prospectus. It literally says this for all of the leveraged ETNs that I personally um, follow. And, and most of them, uh, most of them out there, if not all of them, at least from my uh, you know, knowledge here, are designed that way to only be traded intraday, not long term. So that's my disclaimer there. And uh, either way, USLV has a lot of potential as silver is uh, moving up here. And the last stock that I want to mention 
collection is MA MasterCard. This one, not too great of a day, up 0.2%, uh, up 65 cents, but we did end up holding 295 as a support yet again. Notice how on this yearly chart that was a resistance from about a year ago back in uh, September of 2019. So um, it holding it as a support, very good sign that MasterCard wants to continue this huge run of recovery that it's had, um, you know, pretty much from cracking under $200 per share about a month, two months ago. So those are the main stocks here that I am watching heading into this next week, guys, that I'm looking to trade, that I'm looking to buy some bonus ones. Definitely AMD, although AMD is in a bit of a pickle here uh, based on these technicals that I'm seeing. Um, but if we break 55, guys, that's the key point that I'm looking at um, for AMD at this point. If we break 55, there could be another rally up to maybe 60 bucks on the stock. Another one is Square. Square huddling right under 82. 82 being a pretty critical resistance. Watch the pop there. Maybe back up to the mid 80s, high 80s, maybe even the 90s, guys. So those are the main stocks that I'm watching for next week. And kind of my thoughts on the markets and uh my plans in general guys so if you enjoyed the video hit that like button for me consider subscribing to the channel and again if you want two free stocks valued up to fourteen hundred dollars from webull check out that link down below in the description box all you have to do is deposit a hundred bucks and you get those two free stocks so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching as always your support means a lot to me guys stay safe out there peace out